Hello and welcome to another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you, whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. I'm Lita. I'm Ron. And I'm ready for some eggnog. Eggnog sounds good. Collectively, we are the hosts of Podcast DX. On today's show, we're talking about food safety. And when I think of food safety, I think we should break it down into four sections. Preparation, cooking, storage, and food allergies. Okay. Food prep begins with when you clean your house before ever heading to the grocery store. You can use dilute bleach, that's one teaspoon of bleach in a quart of water, to disinfect hard surfaces. That's right. And we have several grocery shopping tips. Shop for shelf-stable items first. Um, And then shop for refrigerated, frozen, and hot prepared food items last. And make sure that items which are supposed to be cold are cold when you're picking them up off the shelf. And items that are meant to be hot are hot when you add them to your shopping cart. Keep raw meat, poultry, and seafood away from other foods in your grocery cart. At checkout, make sure your raw meat, poultry, and seafood are placed in in a separate bag away from other food items. And before you head to the store, you should check to see if there have been any recalls for instance late lately recently we had uh, recalls on romaine lettuce oh that's right uh, yep uh due to e coli mm-hmm. so that's one of the things you want to look to see if there's been any recalls yeah and lettuce is full of nooks and crannies that can hide bacteria and since it's rarely cooked rarely cooked who cooks lettuce uh foods which typically uh would eat raw like lettuce they aren't cooked and cooking could kill bacteria So lettuce is kind of a no-no right off the bat, right? Once you have your food home, you should store it properly. Cold items should be stored below 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 4 degrees Celsius. And I should point out that you should not rinse off the meat or poultry before cooking it. However, you should rinse off all the fruits and vegetables before eating them. You also need to use separate cutting boards for raw meat and ready to eat items such as vegetables or bread. Do not mix them together. Right, well they have shaped or colored cutting boards to help you remember which board is for what. Like they might have a green cutting board for vegetables and red for meat and paisley. For For unicorns? Ew. There was a typo there, but that's okay. (laughs) Okay. All righty. Moving on. You may also want to use a meat thermometer to check the internal temperature of your dishes. You want to make sure that they're fully cooked and they're safe to eat. Once the food has been prepared, again, make sure to keep your hot foods hot and your cold food cold. Use chafing dishes or crock pots and trays of ice. They can help keep food items at the right temperature. Hot items, those should remain above 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. And again, the cold items should be at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 4 degrees Celsius. You can use several small containers, which can be swapped out for fresh dishes when serving food. And make sure to discard perishable foods left out at room temperature for more than two or more hours. Just get rid of them. Okay. And, and when you're storing foods, it, that's really important to know that they, they need to be stored uh, below 40 degrees in small dishes as well to prevent um, bacteria from growing. And as always, wash your hands and wash them often. Use pasteurized eggs. To wash your hands? No. No, mm-hmm. use soap and water. Okay. Soap and water is always good to wash the hands. But if you're going to be using eggs in a recipe that won't be cooked later, you want to make sure that your eggs are pasteurized. For example, eggnog. And do not eat raw dough or batter. And if you're going to be thawing or marinating any items, thaw or marinate them in your refrigerator below 40 degrees or 4 degrees um, Celsius or in a sink of cold water. And if you're going to be doing that, you need to switch out the water every 30 minutes or in a microwave. And avoid thawing foods on the counter because that's going to be above 40 degrees. I can picture those germs growing now. Yep. (laughs) Uh, Pregnant women are 10 times more likely than others to get listeriosis, a rare but deadly foodborne infection caused by the listeria bacteria. Hmm. And raw or unpasteurized milk and products made with unpasteurized milk um, can contain harmful germs such as listeria. Also avoid 
uh, or so avoid drinking raw milk, eating soft cheeses such as queso fresco, brie, camembert, feta. Wait, 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 wait. Avoid drinking raw milk? Yeah. I drink milk all the time. Your your milk is pasteurized. That's Isn't that raw? Nope. Okay. Pasteurization kills off the harmful bacteria. Well, what's raw milk? Like out of a cow? Yep. Yep. yep oh, yep. okay. And that can make you sick. Um, Thank God you don't have a cow in the backyard. No. no I've always wanted goats, How about a goat? Though? Yeah. Would that be the same thing? Um, I, I'm thinking it's the same thing. And how do they pasteurize? Oh, that's another show. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I, don't I, drink I, milk I actually, out of a goat or yeah. a cow. I mean, you've never seen how they pasteurize milk? I is that what that's going to be another trip to the Museum of Science and Industry right. here in Chicago? I think we're still doing food safety, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. I was just picturing, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I interrupted you on the on the cheeses. That's okay. Just avoid other raw or unpasteurized products such as juice or cider. Those are also pasteurized for our safety. Um, before pasteurization, a lot of people, you know, didn't used to get sick. Very, very, very sick, and many died. And then, if an egg is pasteurized, it floats to the top of the water. Okay, or? nope. Okay, nope, nope. If egg is pasteurized, it spins. If you're and curious it about pasteurization, straight. we'll have a link for that on our website, <laughs> and we might need, yeah, we might need a little um, tone uh, editing because, wow. For our listeners out there, I feel like I'm at a tennis match. The way we're sitting here, <laughs> I'm looking at Jean, and then I'm looking over at Lita, and they're bantering back and forth, and I feel like I'm at the U.S. Open. I'm yep. just picturing, you know, like, I know that there were tests on how to test for pasture. You spin the no, egg. No, that's a hard-boiled egg. Oh, how to test for a hard-boiled, a hard-boiled egg. egg because the center is cooked and won't isn't free-flowing will spin nicely like a top. Okay. A raw egg... Because the egg is not cooked, so the I yolk is free flowing within the shell, yeah. will wobble, wobble and will not spin nicely. Also, if you put an egg in a cup of water, an egg that is older will float near the top because air had, uh, because, well, moisture from inside the egg has evaporated because it is semi permeable. And so it'll start to like fill with air as it gets older. But a fresh egg has very, very little air in it, so it will sink to the bottom of a glass. Gene is the scientist over here. Yeah, and food safety person. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to have to leave it up to her because I'll end up forgetting which direction is supposed to spin and am I supposed to spin it vice versa or counterclockwise or. Only in in Australia. Okay. Just kidding. Okay. All right. Well, (laughs) I was surprised when we were doing research to learn that foods may not look, smell, or taste different when contaminated with bacteria or toxins produced by bacteria. I would have thought that, you know, if they're bacteria laden, they're going to stink to high heaven. Nope. Okay. That's good to know, especially for me who doesn't cook very often. Yeah, it's, it's good to maybe have a roll of masking tape and a marker by your refrigerator, and this way you can annotate when the item was placed in your refrigerator and make sure you dispose of it promptly. Okay. Let's get into something a little bit more exciting. Okay. Cooking. Okay, again, I don't cook, okay. but I eat. So <laughs> let, let's talk cooking. Okay. Um, and food allergies. Uh, a food allergy is a specific type of adverse food reaction involving the immune system. The food allergies are the leading cause of anaphylaxis, which is a sudden, severe, and potentially life-threatening allergic reaction. Anaphylaxis can be caused by food allergies, insect stings, or even medications. Symptoms of food allergies typically appear from within minutes or up to two hours after a person has eaten the food to which they are allergic. Also, people with a known food allergy who begin experiencing symptoms while or after eating should initiate treatment immediately. The prompt administration of epinephrine by an auto-injector, which most people know of as an EpiPen, the quicker you do it during the early symptoms of anaphylaxis, may help prevent serious consequences. I wonder if, um, you know, like, do schools have to have one of those on hand just in case the students don't have one? Well, we did recently learn that um, Raina, who yeah. we interviewed a couple seasons ago. And she's a teacher now. She is a teacher, and she's the one that had... Um, Toxoplasmosis. Right. She had to learn how to use a an EpiPen as part of her training. So she needs to know how to use it, but that doesn't mean that they have one like in the school. No, but I think anyone who has a known food allergy will have one. Will have one. And then also, um, there was a movement in Elmhurst, Illinois, 
that all um, first responders, so like police officers and such, need to have an EpiPen as part of their mm -hmm. gear. That makes sense. Because um, that can be a life or death, you know, a uh, game changer. Right, right. Okay. Some things to keep on hand to prevent foodborne illnesses are soap and water, paper towels by every sink. And we like paper towels because you're not spreading bacteria from a kitchen towel, you know. So paper towels, you throw them away, even though we don't really like paper towels because then they're cutting down. All right, anyway. Uh, buy a thermometer for your refrigerator. Buy a thermometer for your freezer. Buy a thermometer for your oven. Don't use the same one and go back and forth. A fire extinguisher by each exit door. Those little tiny ones, you know, like the size of a flashlight almost. I think those are kitties, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one well, that's one of the biggest brands, yeah. right? At least here in the United States. Uh, for those with food allergies, if you have one, uh, then you should get an EpiPen with you at all times. And to keep foods warm during events like at parties, you should use electric heating dishes to keep your foods hot. Well, yeah, we, we like to use a um, electric heating dish group that all connects together like a chain. I love those. Yeah, and this way we can keep multiple dishes hot and separated, and you can swap out small. Yeah, they're not really huge. They're like maybe a quart okay. or a quart and a mm -hmm. half for yep. each one. Yep. And then you can uh, add to it, add to the, keep the other stuff in the fridge, and then mm -hmm. when that one's empty, just add some more. Mm -hmm. Yep, love them. Well, thank you all for listening. We hope that you found this useful. If you have a question or comment related to today's show, please contact us at podcastdx at yahoo.com, through our website, podcastdx.com, on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or Instagram. And just like Santa, we know when you're being good and bad, so be good for goodness sake. And wash your hands. Wash your hands. And speaking of good, <laughs> if you have a moment to spare, please give us a five-star review wherever you get your podcast. And as always, please keep in mind that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regime. And never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on this podcast. <sighs> Till next week. Oh, 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 oh.